Before Batman, before Superman, before Spider-Man, even before Iron Man, there was one man who struck terror in the hearts of villains all around the world. His name? Sherlock Holmes. Hi, I'm Jake Campbellson here in the home of Sherlock Holmes, London, England, talking with the stars and director about what it means to take a 19th century literary character and make him cool again. Get ready, this is the very special London edition of Jake's Takes. I have a request. Someone I want to see. Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Holmes, you must widen your gaze. You underestimate the gravity of coming events. Tomorrow, at midday, the world as you know it will end. Well, there isn't any time to waste then. Is there? Guys, I have to tell you, I did not know hardly anything about Sherlock Holmes coming into this, so I did a lot of research before I saw the movie last night, and I was so surprised by how badass these guys were in the original literature. Exactly. They, because it had never really been presented like that before. Was it nice to, to be able to, you know, kind of go from the stereotype of kind of the Abbott and Costello to more of like a Butch and, you know, Sundance kind of? That's what got us both on board, I yeah. think. That I was think, the thrill. I think we also were just lucky that nobody had recognized this and gone for it sooner. So right. to me, there's just a bit of a sense of destiny to it. Also, I think that Guy Ritchie, you know, uh, a lot of people didn't necessarily initially associate him with the perfect Sherlock Holmes director. And by the time we were in rehearsals and a couple days into shooting, I just couldn't have imagined doing this with anyone else. No, indeed. But you, you actually hit the nail on the head with what we wanted to achieve. That, you know, obviously at the heart of the legend is this incredible cerebral, uh, savantic, like genius. And the cases all require meticulous un unpicking. But equally, they're on the front line of, of a London when London was, you know, incredibly dangerous. And the, the world that they were dipping in and out of, whether it was the gentry or the, the underbelly, you know, they were facing off with some really hardcore criminals nasty. and nasty people who did who didn't have you know much to lose and when you're doing that you're, you're gonna you're gonna get your your hands dirty and so being able to dip into both those worlds the cerebral and the physical was 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 a joy and great fun to make <laughs> the witness stated that he saw lord blackwood rise from the grave i want you to find him and stop him that'll take every ounce of my not inconsiderable experience this may be a hobby to you mr holmes but i do it for a living it does make a considerable difference to me, having someone with me on whom I can thoroughly rely. Oh, it's nice to see you, Watson. So, for you, what comes first? Making a Sherlock Holmes movie or making a Guy Ritchie movie when approaching this? <laughs> um... Uh, I'm not sure if the two are mutually exclusive. Um, I mean, one's inevitably going to get bound up with the other. But, uh, I mean, Sherlock Holmes is uh, kind of a character that I was deeply involved with when I was a child. So I suppose I've been gestating uh, a visual uh, idea of who Sherlock Holmes should be anyway. Um, and when Warner's approached me with the, uh, with the idea of this, um, it just seemed like such a sort of an obvious marriage in my mind. So... Uh, and it's funny with the studio, uh, the studio sort of argued for sort of Guy Ritchie isms, as it were, and I argued for studio isms. I wanted to make it broad and accessible, and they wanted it to come through the eyes of a filmmaker. So we both sort of argued for one another's camp, rather kind of uh, ironically. Uh, I was fighting for them, and they were fighting for me, and, and that led to obviously a kind of a happy marriage. So uh, I hope I hope that we've managed to. I hope we get the feeling it's a filmmaker's film. Um, but at the same time, make it uh, accessible. I mean, the idea is, is that you know the whole family can uh, get get a tickle from Sherlock Holmes. You've never complained about my methods before. I never complain. What do I complain about? You practicing the violin at three in the morning, or your mess, your general lack of hygiene, or the fact that you steal my clothes. Now, I, I really think one of the reasons that I, I bought this friendship is because, like any great friendship, like like friendships that I you know I have with my guy friends. You know, sometimes they really annoy the hell out of you. Sometimes yeah. they just... Are there things about each other on set, you know, that, that maybe annoyed? I felt bad for him sometimes because we'd be doing all these fight sequences and I'd be loosey-goosey and he'd be wearing a proper starched collar. I'm like, <laughs> Christ, couldn't we have made one out of some soft little stuff? He's like, just wouldn't be right. Next time we will. Or next time you'll be wearing a T-shirt. Yeah. I've heard you already quoted saying that in a magazine. Right. <laughs> next time I'm wearing a vest. That starched collar was the... Oh, I tell you... 
right from lacerating my neck every time I turn my head, let alone punch someone. Literally right from the beginning though, you know, it, it was a huge burden off, uh, off me playing Sherlock to know that even though Sherlock Holmes is the title, it's, it's, the, it's, the, um, it's the John Watson Sherlock Holmes story. Doyle is Watson. Doyle is essentially the guy who wrote all these books so from Watson's point of view. So um, it really is, you know, if, if we hadn't done this, it wouldn't have had this result. So I think a Guy's smartest thing was being uh, crazy enough to put us on screen together. Be a lady. Holmes, does your depravity know no bounds? No. Had the, the idea ever crossed your mind to make it R-rated, or had, had you ever think, well, if, if we could make this R-rated, I would do this differently? Um, n not really, no. Um, it doesn't seem as though it needs to be an R-rated movie. Uh, I never felt as though uh, Conan Doyle saw it as anything that was gratuitous enough to, to, uh, to make it necessary for it to be an R-rated movie. Um, it just it just doesn't sort of seem to lend itself to that palette. Um, however, you know, I, I hope we have our serious moments as well as we do have our moments of levity. This is my, my first trip to London, and one thing that I've noticed, oh. I love it. Oh my God, it's, I'm in the middle of finals right now, so I had to get out of finals <laughs> and come here. I love it. But one thing I've noticed that about London compared to the States is it's kind of like a more controlled chaos. Like things seem to be much more, is it different shooting in the States as opposed to, to shooting here in London? Much more civilized here, to tell you the truth. Yeah, sometimes the hours, like we very rarely had a proper lunch hour, and yet they always figured mm -hmm. out a way that we could uh, take a break. And, and I, I do believe things are, are a little more centered around uh, being uh, courteous and understanding how hard everyone is working as opposed to just product. product There's a fantastic product. one, you know, professionalism in, in the States that gets, get, gets things done. But you do feel here like everyone on set, whether, you know, uh, uh, they be there for a day or for the, whole, for the whole stretch or whatever job they may be doing, has an opinion and will tell you that opinion. <laughs> yes. So, you know what I mean? They can be the dolly grip and they're going, yeah, I'm not sure you should have done it like that, mate. Or, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean they'll exactly. let you know. But on the, other, on the end of that, they'll, it, the great thing is they care. And I'll tell you, Guy runs such a happy set. It was, it, there was a, a lot of opinion, um, but, but, you know, always very positive input and people wanted, cared about what we were making. That's not to say that, they don't care in the States, but it's a very different vocal, yeah. quite emotional engagement with the job. Also varies project to project, you know, like shooting stage work in London can just be in the most blisteringly doldrumified experience ever. Just Truly. Because it's way out of town and they're very old and all these illusions have been shot there. Whereas in, you know, LA, you can hop off the studio lot and run down to some hip little, you know, restaurant down there. But we did all our stage work in New York, which to me was again, this great, allied invasion of not doing a Hollywood movie in, uh, in Hollywood at all, but splitting it between almost entirely the UK and then mm. uh, you like a bit of New York. Yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah. But funnily enough also, the, the, the place where we, where we did film it in the States was, was all in keeping in, in, in spirit. And the time of year, it was snowing at the time, and icy cold, it all was in spirit very much of the world of the film that we've made. Now I fucking feel as though I should have dressed up. You are, look at you. Uh, but Lauren, I could have put on my tweed numbers. Jake, you can stay. Okay. <laughs> Where the fuck do you think you're going? <laughs>